Well, in Detroit, there was so much political drama going on about our school system. I didn't know what was really happening, but all I knew is that there was lots of drama. Who's going to control the school system? They got the finances wrong. We need more money in this in this sector. We, I mean, Detroit, we were, the whole community was just crazy about something. Everybody had some political drama. Oh, but the governor wants control of it. Oh, but the State Board of Education wants control of it. Oh, we're going to take over your school system. You folks don't know how to run a school system. I mean, it was just trauma. So the state ended up taking things over. They appointed a new board. Community groups, mostly parent organizations, were really opposed. I mean, they didn't want state government people running around the school system telling people how their schools are going to be run. Um, teachers were always on strike because they were tired of how the school board was operating. So teachers having trouble with school board. School board is having trouble with the state of Michigan. They're about to get taken over. They're about to lose their jobs. Now there's one group that I didn't mention in all that. Who didn't I mention? Right. Who was looking out for the students? I mean, the simple answer is nobody. <laughs> because everybody was caught up in the drama. Everyone was caught up in the issue of control, right? Um, who cares? Like, I, I want to see a teacher that's motivated and ready to work with me, right? I want to go to school. I want to learn. And I want to progress towards my dreams. And my dreams included um, coming out here <laughs> for school. So it's, it's, it seemed like there was a lot of a lack of focus. Nobody was worried about what the students were doing. And I think the first step in, in anything that you do is to be aware of what your problem is and be aware of what the real deal is, right? And all of the drama about control, 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 ooh, the state's going to take it over, ooh, the governor wants it this way, that, that had nothing to do with students pursuing and achieving their dreams. I mean, what is, you going to tell me you're replacing the mayor with the governor over who's in charge of schools? I'm telling you, I don't care. Like, can I have a book, please? Can I have, I'm sitting here, we're sharing books, three people. What, someone give me a book. Like, don't, you can change who's going on downtown all you want to. So, with the school student council, I was with the citywide student council. And we worked together, we met once a month to try to bring up whatever issues we were facing with each other and try to suggest solutions among us. And we found out one of the delegates from the uh, northwestern side of the city, she told us that her, she was just all distraught because her friend was recently attacked walking to school. The girl was just walking to school like normal in the morning. Detroit has a lot of abandoned buildings and shady areas where they are really dangerous. I mean, they're dangerous from just collapsing. They're dangerous as scenes of crimes. I mean, they're like old crack houses, which could be even worse sometimes because they're allowed to just collapse. Um, but she was walking to school, and she was assaulted in one of these abandoned houses that's on the route going to school. So we just we got a little riled up because that's just ridiculous. You can't you can't expect people to go to school if they're watching their back every step of the way. Um, one of my favorite um, artists in, in one of his songs proclaims that he's the, he's from the jungle with the concrete streets, right? And I feel like going outside of your door should not be like stepping into a jungle, right? It shouldn't be that deep. You should be able to walk down a block to your school and try to get some knowledge if your school has books there. <laughs> you know, we were having some trouble getting the books together, but that's a whole other, that's a whole other issue. But just, just stepping outside your door shouldn't be that deep. You should just be able to walk to school. That should just be normal. And it should be slightly boring, not all this, you know, watching your back business. So she's going to school, she's attacked, her friends are distraught, come to this meeting, we're all getting distraught. And then we start to try to focus on, you know, why is that? What's, what's, our, what's our vision? How should things be, right? A walk to school shouldn't be that crazy. So the vision of how it should be, I mean, we should be able to walk outside, outside our doors and feel like Detroit has our backs. Like there's no problem, we're just closing on the lawn to school, no drama here. 
we're just trying to get to school and get our learning on, provided that there's books. <laughs> so we're just walking to school. We want, that's our vision for, for the city of Detroit, is just to make this a boring activity. And the way that happened when we started breaking down solutions is wouldn't it be great if we had police to patrol our streets? Like, wow, that's a big, you know, who thought of that one? Police walking around when you're on your way to school. Now, police are around in general, but it's more important for them to be there when you're outside, right? You want to make sure that somebody has your back while you're going to school. So we wanted to make sure, we, we specified what we call rush hours. And the rush hours were the times where students are walking to school. And that was about 8 to 9 in the morning, because some schools started at different times. Or maybe it was 7 to 8. Yeah, I guess it was about 7. You have to be careful when you get to college, though, because you start shifting everything later. <laughs> but 7 to 8, no. Man, I used to get up that early. That's crazy. But it's about 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning is when people are making their way to school. In the time in the evening, post school was about 2.30, 3.30 time. So we told, we, we said, okay, these are the times where the police have to be on their job. They've got to be on point. So one student who was working with safety issues, organized a little phone tree, start calling up the precincts. Precinct commanders are like, what is this craziness? This young person is trying to tell me when to be patrolling. This is my job. What are you talking about? Get off of my phone. Like, I mean, they just weren't helpful. So we decided we needed to change change the story of education. And the story of education was all that political drama stuff. Everybody was talking about takeover, state government, new board, unelected, blah, blah, blah. And we needed to make sure that the focus was on students walking to school. So they can deal with all that stuff about who's controlling the red tape and who's controlling where money goes where. I wish they would send it to some books, but who, but who's controlling the apparatus and bureaucracy? And we were worried about folks walking to school. So we took that simple message to everyone who would let us talk. And the people who let us talk for free was our local hip hop DJ, Mason in the Morning, Edgar 98. And they just gave us some airtime. And so my friend Christian, on the council with me, he went on JLB and they gave him some airtime. And they let him talk to Detroit about what was going on. The students were just tired of being scared walking to school. So from there, in the course of just being on the radio, people were calling in to voice their support for students. They decided we're not we're not gonna go to school if if you're gonna if you're not gonna watch our bets on the way to school. So there was a walkout at the two largest high schools in the city. Each of them have about 3,000 students each. So if you can imagine about 3,000 people decided not to go to school and instead deciding to get themselves downtown. Yeah, that was some drama. It was some drama that uh, outweighed all that other drama going on. So that was how getting attention to the issue is what, is what really saw, saved the day. Because once they realized the students were really, really passionate about this, that they weren't going to go to schools that weren't safe. That they would prefer to go to schools that were safe and also had books. <laughs> and that they were going to do something about it until people started paying attention to what was important. And all that, who's controlling the board, oh, is the state going to take it over, blah, blah, blah. Like, I couldn't care less. I mean, school board, change it however you want. Give me some books and make sure we can walk to school. So at, at the end of that walkout, it, that's basically what happened. Um, the mayor got called out on having a police department that wasn't doing their job. So they had, to, they had to take corrective action. And they sent a letter home to every parent, and they told every parent in the city that from now on, from 7 to 8 in the morning, from 2 to 3 in the evening, intensive patrols around your schools, and then from now on, there will be one police officer stationed in every Detroit public school in the city from that point forward. And that was a lasting impact. But to this day, people are walking to school and they've got somebody watching their back. And keep in mind, like that solution 
it wasn't that complicated. Like, I mean, what's a police force supposed to do except to watch your back when you're walking around and trying to get to school? It wasn't, it wasn't that deep. It was just a matter of making, staying on message, keeping that vision of walking out your door and having a boring walk to school every day to a place that hopefully has some books. <laughs> and that's the, that's the story of the Detroit Safe Streets Initiative, is what we called it. And there were community patrols a part of it. Um, local block clubs would start putting on a little flasher on top of their car just to roll around and make sure people weren't messing around in these abandoned buildings. We still haven't solved the abandoned buildings problem in Detroit, mind you. Because our, that's our city government. Um, but we do have patrols now to make sure that, at least for the young people, for students trying to make their boring walk to school, that it's going to be safe and that somebody's watching them.